Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. What does it say in, in, in Hebrews? If we continue to sin willfully, knowing that we're doing something wrong, what awaits us but terrifying what? Expectation of judgment. Man, you know it's coming. Because when you do something wrong and you know you're not supposed to do it, you don't even need anyone to tell you because the Holy Spirit keeps saying, don't do it. And you keep doing it. And you're like, don't do it. And you keep doing it. And you keep feeling bad about it. But you know what? You're supposed to feel bad about it because the Spirit is trying to say, stop it before you stand before God, because if you go on sinning willfully, someday, whether you like it or not, we're all going to stand before God. T turn with me to Romans 14. This is really the, the best sister passage I know. In Romans 14, if you are a meat eater, you can't judge the vegetarian either, because verse 1 says, now accept the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on his opinions. One person has faith that he might eat all things. Another man, he has faith only that he eats vegetables. The one who eats is not to regard with contempt the one who does not eat. And the one who does not eat does not get to judge the one who does eat. For God has accepted him. By the way, that means you vegetarians don't get to judge me because I eat meat. Because God still accepts me. In fact, I'm going to show you in, in Mark's Gospel in just a second in chapter 7 what the words of Jesus are concerning this whole thing. When it comes to food, is Jesus really tripped out about what goes into our mouth? Those of you who know the passage, let me just jump to it real fast. I'll come back to this. Mark chapter 7, Jesus' words, he says, Verse 14, and the crowds came to him, and Jesus began to say to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand, there is nothing outside a man which can defile him, if it go in him. But the things which proceed out of a man are that which defile the man. And then Jesus cries, If anyone has an ear to hear, what? Let him hear. Now, when they, when they had left the crowd, verse 17, Mark 7, 17, the disciples came to him and they questioned him. What was that you were telling about that parable about not what goes in, you know, but what comes out? And Jesus said to them, Are you so lacking of understanding? Listen to the words of our Lord. He says to them, Don't you understand that whatever goes into a man from outside cannot defile him? Whatever you put in your mouth, it can't defile you. He says, Because it does not go into the heart, but it goes into your stomach. And then it goes, well, this is, and it is eliminated. That's a polite way of saying then it goes out to the potty. He says, that doesn't defile you. You know why? Because it only went through your digestive system. Did it go into your heart? Did that food, that thing you put in your mouth, go into your heart? He says, no. The source of our defilement is the heart. Jesus goes on, he says, in verse 20, oh, well, I'm sorry, he says, because it does not <clears throat> go into the, it, it goes in his stomach and is eliminated, and then in parentheses, you might have this written in your Bible, thus he declared, how many foods clean? All foods clean. Just so you know, I always bank on the words of Jesus. If he says all foods is clean, then I have to trust him. Because he's actually not concerned about what goes in here, because that's not what defiles. But he goes on and he says, then he told them, that which proceeds out of the man, that's what defiles the man. From within, it says, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, fornications, that's sleeping together outside of marriage, thefts, murders, adulteries, that's sleeping outside of your marriage vows with someone else, deeds of coveting and wickedness, as well as deceit, 
sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All of those things are in the heart. And they come out, Jesus said, and all these evil things proceed from within the man, and that's what defiles a man. Did you realize that it's all those evil things in our heart that are really the defiling thing of our lives, not the food we put in our mouth? But I submit to you, how many of you have been exposed to certain groups of, I don't even want to call them sects of Christianity, they're more like cults, where the first thing they ask is, do you eat this or not eat that? Do you drink this or not drink that? They measure their holiness on what goes in the mouth. Somehow they miss Mark 7. I don't know how you can... Well, it's easy. All the cults just ignore whatever they don't like to read. I believe in reading you the whole counsel of God. Every chapter, every verse, the whole book. Because Jesus said, if you know the truth, the truth sets you what? Free. I want you to be free. And to me, this is very freeing, that all things are clean in the sight of the Lord. It's good for my, you know, understanding, right, Dave? That, that we know, and the Lord doesn't care this, what here. He cares in the heart. That's where it counts, here. i got to clean up my heart. David said, create in me a clean heart, O God. Remember after he was caught in sin with Bathsheba? Had her husband killed? And the prophet came to him, and God worked him over. But he, he relented. You know, the Bible says David was a man after God's own heart. That's a beautiful thing, to be a man after God's own heart. Because it, the Bible tells us in Chronicles, the eyes of the Lord, they go to and fro all around the whole earth, just looking for one person whose heart is towards the Lord. You know why? Because it says, because God desires to strongly support that person. Now, I don't know about you, but anyone can use God's strong support. Man, I'm like, Lord, here I am. Here I am. My heart. It's a little bit wicked. Clean it up, please. I do what David did. Created me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit, Lord. Help. I, I haven't got the I would not ever eat meat again thing if it was someone my brother. Now, Romans 14, back to where we were. Paul went on and he said, guys, when it comes to eating meat or not eating meat, you don't get to look at your brother and judge them whether they eat or don't eat. That's not your job. Who is the only person we're supposed to examine? Yourselves. Yourselves. Next week, we're going to take communion together. And I want you to examine yourself. Forget about your spouse or your neighbor or someone who's been, we're going to examine our own hearts and get them right, get them clean so that we don't eat and drink judgment to ourselves. Because if you take communion lightly and don't think, hey, I don't really want to call my sin, sin, guess what? You take communion, God calls your sin, sin. And in the book, <laughs> interestingly enough, do you know which church was written to in the Bible? That, that took it lightly and Paul had to write and say, many of you are weak and sick amongst you because you take communion without even examining yourself. You don't judge your own sin and call it what it is. Anyone know what church that was? Corinthians. It's Corinthians, the church we're studying about right now. It's a little further, chapter 11, but it'll take me like six months till we're there, so I just thought I'd <laughs> preview for you. We're only at... Chapter 8 right now. So give me some time. But see, in Romans, when Paul wrote to the church at Rome, it's interesting to me that the same message with a little bit different... Um, ex I love how he has such a gift to explain. Listen to what he says. He says, you don't get to, to judge each other. Back to Romans 14, verse 4. Who are you to judge the servant of another? To his own master he stands or he falls. And he will stand for the Lord. I love this verse. The Lord is able to make him stand. Don't be judging your brother over what he puts in his mouth. God will make him stand. Now, one person, Paul says, regards one day above another. Another regards every day alike. Each person must be fully convinced in his own mind. Do you know that in the church of Rome, some were arguing over what day of the week should we worship God? 
Have you guys run into anybody that does this today? Oh, it's the Sabbath, Shabbat. We only worship on Saturday. You people who worship on Sunday took the mark of the beast. That's what they teach. Really, seriously. There's a whole group that hold to that perspective. I think they're completely wrong. And they forgot to read Romans 14, verse 5. Each person, it says, must be fully convinced in his own mind. Now, he who observes the day observes it for the Lord. He who eats, he does so for the Lord, and he gives thanks to God. He who does not eat, for the Lord he does not eat, and he gives thanks to God. For not one of us lives for himself, and not one of us dies for himself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. Whether we live or we die, we are what? The Lord's. Does this sound familiar? Because he wrote this to the church at Corinth. Don't you guys know your body belongs to who? The Lord. Therefore, glorify God with your what? Your body. We just went over this. This is why this is a perfect sister passage, Romans 14, to what we're studying in Corinthians today. For to this end Christ died, he says, verse 9, Romans 14, 9, and he lived again that he might be both the Lord of the dead and the living. But you, why do you judge your brother? And again, why do you regard your brother with contempt? For he, we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, verse 11, this comes from Isaiah 45, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall give praise to God. Isaiah 45, 23. So then, Paul says, each one of us will give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather determine this, that we not put an obstacle or a stumbling block in a brother's way. You know, how about we just make a determination that we don't try to stumble our brother? Is, would that be good for our church this week? We just say, okay, everybody, let's just try to not stumble our brother. Let's look out not for ourselves, but for what? Others. Let's don't put a stumbling block in their way. Paul says, I know, and I am convinced in the Lord Jesus that nothing is, in, is unclean in itself. Paul knew. In the knowledge of the Lord, nothing is unclean. But to him who thinks it to be unclean, what about the guy that it, it bugs his conscience? I can't eat that because it was an animal and I took a life and it really makes me have trouble. Well, guess what? You don't get to eat it. Because to him who thinks it's unclean, what does it say? It is unclean. For because of food, Paul says, your brother is hurt, you're no longer walking according to love. Do not destroy, he says, with your food, him for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let what is for you a good thing be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not about meat nor drink, but it is about three things, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.